Hi, what's up? Goodbye, but it's Arrow here for CreativeStream.com, and today we'll take a look at how to create a light trails in Blender. And this tutorial is the part of the Lighting Open Project series of tutorials devoted to digital lighting, and be sure to check it out. Please visit Creative Shrimp and leave your comment. Tell me what you like about it and what you don't like at all. And that's the result of our tutorial. Hopefully you'll get something like that in the end. And probably if you are a photographer, you can do it 100 times better. I'm sure about it. Alright, first of all, let's create a spline and make it glow. Because we're going to fake the effect. We won't use the motion blur because it just can't give us the result we want in Blender. These complex trajectories with the motion blur simply doesn't work for now, but we'll use splines. You can see me here tweaking the spline handles uh, by going to the edit mode by pressing tab. And what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to make something appealing composition-wise. Maybe it's just something like a golden spiral, but just tilted. And after we finish creating spline, let's create a road underneath. Let's just do it by duplicating the spline and adjusting its uh, depth. And what I'm gonna do here is to set twisting to tangent. And actually it's not depth, it's an extrude parameter, tweak it to see the results. And by doing it you should get something like a road already. And don't forget to click on the checkbox use UV for mapping, because we're gonna to apply a texture. In material editor let's add a texture, I just downloaded this one from CG Textures. And already you can see that the scale is not right and the rotation is not right. We need to adjust the Z rotation by 90 degrees. And after doing it, you will get a nice road in your scene and it's very cool. Imagine the possibilities with the spline and UV mapping. Imagine ropes, wires, whatever. And now let's refine our emissive material using procedural noise. Because right now it's too uniform. Let's set the emission color to red and let's add a transparent shader. We will mix the emission shader with a transparent shader using procedural noise. Uh, because I want to break up the shader to make it more interesting, let's add a Mosgrave texture connected to the mix factor node of the mix shader. And actually, to preview any node, just click on a node while holding Ctrl and Shift. Alright, so here I tweak in uh, scale of the Mosgrave texture node and watch how it affects the material and it's already very interesting stuff going on here. You can imagine a bunch of things using this effect because the procedural shaders are very interesting overall. Uh, let's randomize the material procedurally. One more time, use the procedural techniques. If you duplicate our spline right now, you will get something like this and uh, you can already see the repetition going on. But what if you want to randomize each spline? First of all, insert the math node between the mapping and the Mosgrave texture nodes, then multiply it with a random node of the object info node. And bam, you have randomized everything. Congratulations, my friend. And now you can emulate the traffic on the road by duplicating the splines and placing it like the cars are moving. And the rest, honestly, is just tweaking of our procedural textures, especially uh, try tweaking the scale and also try inserting the color ramp node after the texture. Using this node, you can easily control the contrast of the effect. All right, let's move on to the next step. Uh, let's add a color variation to our material procedurally. One more time, yeah. I'm just enabling the film emulation here to make it prettier because for some reason everything looks better with film emulation. And let's just copy our node group and press Ctrl, Shift and left mouse button click to preview it. And then just create a color ramp and hit Ctrl and click to add a color stop and create something like this. Red and orange, just two colors distributed according to your will. And plug this stuff into emission color slot. And if something doesn't look right, try tweaking the scale of a mapping node and also the location. Alright, cool. And the next step is to spice it up with the details. 
And by the way, today I'm drinking Costa Rican coffee once again, and I like it so much. And these details, I just downloaded it from Blendswap. This boom track and these lamps. And it's astonishing how many good things you can download from Blendswap. And they're completely free, it's mind-blowing. Okay, so let's place some of those models into our scene. And what's the reason behind it? We're doing here because we want to make it interesting. We want to avoid the repetition because repetition is boring. And the last step is to add a motion blur to our scene. See, we still use the motion blur a little bit. And to add a keyframe, just select your model and press Ctrl I. And then select the location and do it on the frame zero. Then switch to the frame 2 and move your models. And after that, if we render frame 1, we should get a, a little bit of motion blur going on. Alright folks, that's all. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you want to learn more about Lighting Open Project, visit creativeshrimp.com and leave your comment. Also, it won't mean a ton for me if you share this video with other nerds. And thank you so much for watching it. See you next time.